Hello to everyone. I am Professor M. Z. Abdeen from the Department of Biotechnology, School of Chemical and Life Sciences, Jamia Hamdard, New Delhi, India. I am going to talk on genes to therapeutics, remodeling plant secondary metabolism for improved health. As we already know that uh, medicinal plants, they are at the verge of extension and some of them have already been extinct because of their uh, extensive use in uh, herbal medicine industry. We have developed protocols for micro, micro propagation and conservation of these medicinal plants using uh, tissue culture. So uh, we have developed uh, a protocol uh, for uh, culture of uh, Stevia rivadiana uh, to develop whole plants from uh, nodal explant and leaf explants. Uh, we have used various uh, media composition uh, including uh, growth regulators and uh, we got the complete plant data of Estevia rivadiana which is a very famous plant uh, giving a natural sweetener that is Estevial glycosides. Then we also developed a tissue culture protocol for the development of complete plant lead using leaf explants of Artemisia anva. Uh, here again, we have utilized MSBS basal medium with a combination of uh, auxins and cytokinins uh, for the development of multiple shoots and then uh, rooting uh, using uh, indole acetic acid in the MS medium to get the complete plant then we also developed the complete plant of Tenoispora cardifolia uh, using uh, the MS basal medium uh, with the uh, different combinations of hormones and uh, then finally uh, the shoots they have been developed they were rooted using uh, indole butyric acid uh, in basal medium. So we got the complete uh, plant plates of all these three medicinal plants and then we harden them and uh, then uh, put them uh, in uh, outside uh, in the field. We have also developed hairy roots from Vithania somnifera leaves and uh, these hairy roots were then uh, used in 5 liter bioreactors to produce vitrolide, uh, we found that highest concentration of vitrolide in the culture medium was achieved on 22nd day of the culture and uh, this could be now up, uh, upgraded to, to the industrial scale uh, for the production of uh, the vitrolides. There is a major problem of uh, adulteration or uh, substitution of uh, medicinal herbs uh, to make uh, traditional medicines uh, in uh, pharmaceutical industries. So in order to uh, authenticate and uh, quality control of these herbal drugs, we have developed DNA based SCAR markers which are highly reliable, unique, more suitable, most stable and are not affected by either the age of the plant, uh, the physiological conditions of the plant and also environmental factors. These SCAR markers are also ubiquitous and they are present in most of the plant species and therefore uh, we have developed the protocol optimized it uh, for the development of SCAR markers. Uh, this uh, include the DNA extraction from the genuine uh, herb and also the 
uh, adulterant and uh, then uh, after extraction uh, its amplification using RAPD uh, PCR and uh, thereafter uh, identifying the unique amplicon uh, which is uh, unique to the adulterant and also unique to the uh, genuine half. So these unique amplicons are thereafter purified and then cloned uh, in PGMT easy vector then uh, this vector was used to transform E. coli cells and then uh, using blue white screening we identified the transformed uh, E. coli cells from there we uh, uh, isolated again the plasmid having uh, these unique amplicons and then we sequence them to uh, and uh, then uh, use the sequence uh, uh, to 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 identify whether they are unique or not uh, uh, using NCBI search blast search. Then uh, uh, once we identified the uniqueness, then uh, we could be use these scar markers for uh, authentication and quality control of herbal medicines. Now actually I can uh, uh, give an example where we could be able to identify the genuine uh, herbal medicine uh, from the uh, from its adult rent. Now you can see here like uh, the seeds in the petri plates which are so first is the seeds of cascuta reflexa which is a genuine herbal seed and then it is from cascuta chinensis the second one which is uh, adult rent. So these two seeds they are similar in morphology and in color and therefore could not be distinguished even if they are mixed in different proportion in the form of powder uh, you, uh, they cannot be distinguished. You can see here this is the 100% of the seed powder of Cascuta reflexa while it is 100% of the seed powder of Cascuta chinensis and you can see here there is no difference in the color. So if uh, uh, one can go and uh, get uh, the medicine from the market uh, and if it is adulterated uh, it cannot be distinguished uh, which uh, basically compromise the therapeutic efficacy of the uh, herbal medicine. So uh, we actually uh, using the steps previously uh, explained we developed we amplified the DNA extracted from these two uh, plants and then uh, we amplified them uh, we uh, after an amplification uh, using PCR and uh, RAPD primers uh, we uh, Resolve the uh, uh, resolve the uh, reaction mixture uh, once the reaction is completed on agro gel, and uh, after resolving, uh, we could get the unique amplicons uh, of 698 base pair for Cascuta reflexa and 576 base pair for Cascuta chinensis. Then we developed, uh, uh, we uh, cloned them uh, as mentioned previously in E. coli and then uh, we isolated the plasmids. Uh, we got sequenced uh, these unique amplicons and then uh, we developed uh, uh, primers, uh, unique primers uh, of these uh, amplicons and uh, thereafter again to validate uh, we extracted DNA from both uh, Cascuta reflexa and Cascuta chinensis and then uh, through PCR amplification again uh, we use these uh, SCAR primers to uh, uh, amplify the DNA extracted from Cascuta reflexa and Cascuta chinensis uh, using SCAR primer of Cascuta chinensis and uh, we got uh, the desired uh, amplicons uh, after uh, resolving on a gel. 
we suggest that uh, the primers which we develop, they are very unique in the sense that they are able to only anneal with the DNA fragment, uh, which is unique to the, uh, these particular plants respectively. Thereafter, we actually uh, mixed the seed powders of Cascuta reflexus uh, and uh, Cascuta chinensis in different proportion. And when we used SCAR primer of Cascuta reflexa, we could get uh, amplification uh, based on the uh, decreasing order of uh, Cascuta reflexa powder. You can see here, like there is a decline in the intensity of the bands. Uh, and uh, then uh, uh, the, the band disappeared uh, in the case where the Cascuta reflexa seed powder was completely replaced by Cascuta chinensis. And uh, so this actually shows that our scar markers are quite specific to uh, this plant. And they, they can only uh, able to amplify the DNA extracted from this plant. While uh, in case of Cascuta chinensis, when we used uh, Cascuta chinensis uh, leaf powder and uh, then uh, we mixed it with Cascuta reflexa leaf powder, then you can see here there is a decline uh, uh, in the uh, intensity of the band. Uh, and uh, when uh, the Cascuta chinensis seed, uh, seed DNA was completely replaced by uh, Cascuta reflexa, then uh, there was no band obtained after amplification. So these uh, the, these results suggest that our uh, scar markers were quite reliable and reproducible, and they can be used in quality control of the herbal drug that is made from Cascuta reflexa and Cascuta uh, chinensis. If they are adulterated, we can check the quality control. Uh, check the uh, whether uh, the drug is uh, genuine or it is adulterated with Cascuta chinensis seed powder. Then uh, we developed the scar markers for many other herbal medicines, uh, which include Pargisuda, Pilfilsea, Zaris, Kamla, Kurkam, Muleti, Rivanchini, Unnav, and Sena. And we uh, found that uh, most of the market samples uh, of, the, of these drugs uh, were uh, adulterated with, uh, with the adulterants, and uh, then there are also uh, market samples which were which were found uh, mixed with the genuine herb and also the adult trends. So let me come to the second part of our uh, research that we are conducting in our laboratory that is related to by engineered uh, plant varieties uh, which include both medicinal and industrial crops. So actually we have worked uh, on two important uh, plants. One is uh, Artemisia anva, the other one is Stevia ribadiana. Artemisia is uh, a very important uh, medicinal plant uh, yielding artemisinin, uh, which is uh, utilized in artemisinin based combination therapy to treat malaria. Uh, as we already know that uh, every year, uh, there are around uh, 247 million cases uh, which occurred worldwide and uh, um, uh, about uh, 619,000 uh, deaths occurred uh, in uh, 2021 uh, out of the cases reported. Uh, children aged under 5 years uh, we are the most vulnerable group affected by malaria and uh, they are accounted for 80% of our malaria deaths. So, you can see like the importance of this uh, artemisinin based com combination therapy. Uh, the main problem uh, with this therapy is however, uh, the main compound artemisinin uh, is very low uh, in artemisia anva. Uh, you can see here the distribution of uh, the, uh, the artemisinin uh, in different uh, parts of the plant. And uh, you can see here uh, like, uh, 
uh, highest organismin uh, concentration occurs in the flower and seed followed by uh, the leaves. But uh, commercially, artemisinin is extracted from the leaf and uh, therefore, our objective was to enhance artemisinin level uh, in uh, Artemisia annua uh, so that we can uh, uh, reduce the cost of artemisinin based combination therapy and thus it can be uh, uh, used uh, by uh, the people who are affected uh, in developing countries. Now, actually, this uh, artemisinin uh, is basically synthesized through a very complex uh, pathway. Uh, this pathway uh, operates not only in uh, cytoplasm, but uh, some of the precursors, they are coming from the alternate pathway that is uh, operating in chloroplast. Uh, it has been shown that uh, the phenosyl pyrophosphate, uh, which enters into the artemisinin biosynthesis pathway, uh, is synthesized by cytosolic neuronal pathway and also alternate pathway that operates in chloroplast. And then uh, it, it is uh, further uh, converted uh, through a multi step pathway leading to artemisinin biosynthesis. So, uh, actually in our studies and uh, the studies carried, carried out around the world, uh, we have found that uh, major portion of this uh, phenocyl pyrophosphate which is utilized in artemisinin biosynthesis comes from mineral pathway, uh, while a very little uh, is provided uh, by chloroplast pathway and therefore, we uh, focused our research on uh, mevalonate pathway and uh, actually uh, in further uh, studies, we have found that HMG coerectase is a rate limiting enzyme in uh, mevalonate mm -hmm. pathway and then MR4411 diene uh, is uh, diene synthase is the rate limiting step in uh, artemisinin biosynthetic pathway. So, actually we uh, cloned the genes uh, which code for these two enzymes. And then uh, we put them into an expression uh, vector P cambia. You can see here the construct that we have made. <coughs> made. So, uh, in this construct, uh, this uh, HMG coordinate case was driven by ubiquitin promoter, while uh, ADS uh, was driven by 35S promoter. So, uh, this uh, then uh, uh, P cambia vector uh, is used to transform agrobacterium, and then agrobacterium was used to transform. Artemisia and one leaves and from the leaves we developed the whole plants uh, using the tissue culture protocol that we have developed in our laboratory and optimized. So, we uh, uh, after uh, getting the, the transgenic uh, plant lines uh, which we designated as uh, T1, T2, T3, T4, T5 and so on and so forth. Uh, we uh, did uh, uh, copy number uh, analysis of the transgene and then uh, uh, the, the expression levels of the, uh, these genes and what we found is that uh, uh, one of the transgenic lines that is T4 had a single copy of the tra trans uh, genes and then uh, this uh, is uh, this uh, genotype was also found to have a very high expression of uh, HMG coerectase enzyme and also uh, MR4411 diene synthase enzyme. And uh, when we analyzed uh, mevalonate content and artemisinin content uh, of uh, this uh, uh, genotype along with others, we have found that it was having a very high concentration of artemisinin and the, when it compared with the wild type, uh, the percent enhancement was uh, 74%. So, uh, this uh, actually suggests that uh, our bioengineered Artemisia Anva uh, genotypes were much better in terms of accumulation and yield of artemisinin as compared to uh, other genotypes, including wild type Artemisia Anva plants. And thus, uh, the, uh, this improved variety, uh, if cultivated, could uh, enhance the yield of artemisinin and uh, then it can reduce the cost of artemisinin based combination therapy. 
also we have uh, analyzed different metabolites uh, which accumulate uh, which were accumulated in uh, rt uh, anua genotype that we developed and we found that uh, uh, in addition to artemisinin essential oils were also uh, synthesized and uh, their concentration enhanced in rt uh, in this artemisia anua genotype so if we can uh, reduce the synthesis of uh, essential oil uh, then we can further increase artemisinin level so uh, then uh, we uh, further identified many micro rnas which uh, are targeting uh, the genes uh, that uh, encode uh, enzymes involved in uh, mevalonate pathway and artemisinin biosynthesis pathway and uh, then uh, uh, if we can use these micro rnas uh, uh, to modulate artemisinin biocentric pathway, we can develop uh, uh, new varieties of artemisinin anua with even higher yields of artemisinin. So, to conclude uh, our research on artemisinin anua, uh, 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 we, uh, we can see here that we have developed uh, artemisinin anua genotype uh, with uh, 74 percent higher artemisinin level as compared to the wild type. Uh, we had also uh, uh, found that if we can uh, we can reduce the synthesis of essential oil we can uh, enhance further artemisinin level uh, using micro rna uh, for modulation of these biocentric pathways then uh, we used micro rna mediated regulation of uh, plant secondary metabolites uh, the example is stevia rivadiana where we use this approach so uh, we, we already uh, uh, knew that uh, there is a enhancement uh, in the cases of diabetes and uh, it is uh, suggested that uh, by 2045 uh, uh, around 700 million cases of diabetes will be uh, present all over the world and uh, actually uh, India will be one of the largest uh, country after China. Uh, uh, with the highest diabetic population so uh, so actually uh, now there is a trend uh, among the people to replace uh, sugar with the uh, sweeteners which uh, are either artificial or natural but artificial sweeteners have uh, the risk of gastric pancreatic and endometrial cancer uh, that has already been uh, reported uh, in uh, studies so uh, so actually now uh, uh, there is a uh, there is a high demand of the people for natural sweetener and uh, one of them is stevia ribadiana uh, natural sweetener that is stevial glycoside uh, actually this stevial glycoside uh, when it is utilized uh, it is uh, not being used the sugar which is present in uh, stevial glycoside is not being used uh, by uh, us but uh, it is being utilized by the bacteria that is present in our uh, gut and uh, this bacteria uh, hydrolyzes uh, stevial glycosides into steviol and glucose moieties then uh, glucose is uh, being utilized by the bacteria and thus uh, our uh, microflora uh, in the gut uh, uh, is enhanced and then uh, the stevial uh, which is uh, left uh, is being uh, metabolized by the liver uh, to convert uh, into stevial glucuronide that is passed through urine. So uh, actually uh, uh, since there is no calorie gain uh, therefore it is called uh, low calorie sweetener. Now actually uh, this sweetener uh, is not only uh, have sweeten, uh, uh, sweetening properties but also it uh, has antioxidant uh, property and also anti-diabetic and therefore it will be better to be used as a natural sweetener rather than artificial sweetener and uh, thus uh, in order to improve the concentration of the steel glycosides and the uh, we have worked upon the uh, pathway uh, that leads to the synthesis of steel glycosides so this uh, pathway uh, is uh, uh, operating in uh, three compartments uh, cytosol 
chloroplast and endoplasmic reticulum and finally stevial glycosides are uh, synthesized and uh, then is stored in endoplasmic reticulum and uh, but it it has been found that uh, the varieties which are available in india and also elsewhere in the world uh, they have aftertaste bitterness so this is because higher level of uh, stevioside rather than uh, uh, ribadioside yeah, and therefore our uh, uh, approach was also to reduce stevioside and increase ribadioside yeah, to improve the its uh, organoleptic characteristic so we did uh, experiments we identified uh, microRNAs as we already know that these microRNAs are uh, regulating their target genes uh, through uh, degradation uh, that is uh, uh, degradation of uh, their tra transcripts so so uh, after identification of the microRNAs in uh, stevia ribadiana uh, which were involved in uh, the regulation of uh, their target genes in uh, stevial side biosynthetic pathway uh, we uh, wanted to validate uh, their expression uh, in different parts of the plant so we uh, used leaf flower and stem and uh, we evaluated the expression of uh, these microRNAs and uh, it was found that uh, uh, these microRNAs uh, were higher uh, in, in the leaf as compared to other parts of the plant, especially MIR319G and MIRSTV11. So, uh, but uh, uh, in contrast, the the stevial uh, glycosides and uh, ribadioside. Uh, were higher uh, and also the enzymes uh, which were targeted by the, these microRNAs they were higher in leaf as compared to other parts of the plant. So we wanted to further uh, validate uh, their functions uh, by transforming stevia ribadiana using uh, the construct using the construct uh, which uh, is shown here. So, in one of the constructs, uh, we uh, uh, put uh, MIR319G and MIRSTV11 genes in sense orientation. In the other, uh, we put uh, MIR319G uh, in the antisense uh, orientation, while uh, MIRSTV11 in the sense orientation. And then uh, we uh, used uh, these uh, expression uh, vectors uh, to transform Stevia ribadiana. And uh, when uh, we analyzed uh, ribadioside, uh, uh, stereocyte and ribadioside uh, A content in these uh, plants, uh, we found that uh, in, in plants where MIR319G was overexpressed, uh, there was decline in the uh, stereocyte and uh, ribadioside A content. While uh, when MIRSTV11 was uh, overexpressed, there was increase uh, in uh, the content of uh, these metabolites. Uh, when uh, we uh, uh, down-regulated the expression of MIR319G MIR and MIRSTV11, so we observed uh, an opposite uh, result. And uh, then uh, in case where we uh, overexpressed 319G, uh, we downregulated 319G and overexpressed MIS-TV11. In that case, uh, we found uh, that uh, there was a very high increase in uh, ribadioside A, uh, and uh, then uh, uh, there was uh, increase in uh, stereocyte, but it was less than ribadioside A. So mm -hmm. these experiments uh, suggest that uh, we can uh, modulate uh, stereo glycosides in stevia ribadiana using this approach and uh, then we can develop plants uh, where uh, we can improve uh, ribadioside A to stevioside ratio and thus their organoleptic characters. Uh, it can also uh, improve the therapeutic efficacy of uh, stevia ribadiana in terms of its antidiabetic properties. Uh, in order to uh, identify that uh, how MRSTV11 uh, is uh, 
uh, increasing the expression of his target gene. Uh, we actually did uh, in silico analysis where we used uh, mode RNA software uh, to uh, find uh, out miRNA 3D structure uh, uh, of uh, 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 MIRS TV11. And then uh, we used uh, make NA server to uh, generate uh, beta DNA structure of the upstream region of uh, the uh, uh, its target gene. And then uh, we used PiceDoc server uh, to see uh, mRNA DNA interaction. And then uh, the model which we generated, there were 30 models which were generated out of this. Uh, one model uh, was filtered which has a very uh, low score of atomic uh, coordination energy. This suggests that uh, this uh, MIRSTV11 is acting as a uh, um, transcriptional uh, activator and uh, it actually uh, transcription factor and uh, it uh, uh, binds with the upstream region of the uh, of its target gene uh, to overexpress uh, the expression of this gene leading to enhanced synthesis of uh, stvl glycosides and then increase in synthesis of ribardioside A as compared to stvocide. So finally, uh, uh, to, to conclude, uh, we have found that uh, MIRSTV11 uh, upregulated uh, uh, its target gene while uh, MIR319G Downregulated uh, their target genes that when uh, they were uh, 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 th their expressions were mo modulated in uh, STVR ribardiana uh, that resulted into a, a very high increase in the ribardioside and uh, stevocide, uh, leading to uh, improved uh, organoleptic characters and uh, also their uh, therapeutic value. Uh, Finally, I would like to, th to, to thank uh, my students uh, who are uh, involved uh, in, in uh, these works. Some of them have left while others are still uh, with, with me. They are working on dif different aspects. And uh, currently, uh, we are also uh, using uh, gen uh, genome editing tools uh, to develop uh, new varieties of uh, these medicinal and industrial crops uh, for uh, better uh, yield and quality of their produce. Thank you very much uh, uh, for your patience uh, listening.